Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, my name is James Iovino, uh, and today I'll be discussing ways to help ensure your financial security by protecting yourself from becoming a victim of fraud and identity theft. So over the past few years, uh, there has been a real noticeable increase in the amount of fraud and scams uh, directly targeting consumers. Uh, fraudsters have been especially uh, have especially used the pandemic to help prey on people's financial worries and fears. Uh, so it's important uh, more than ever to be aware of the types of fraud that are out there. Uh, remember that your peace of mind and financial security is always UNFCU's top priority. Now, we're here to help you stay safe and secure in your financial lives. Uh, although fraud and scams may be intimidating, there are steps you can take to stay in control. Uh, I'm hoping that everyone will learn something during today's presentation that will help them become more aware of some of the warning signs of fraud and what to do to stay safe. So, of course, scammers want your money, uh, but they usually need certain information in order to get it. Uh, social engineering is a term you may have heard before, and it describes the trickery that a fraudster may use to get someone to do something they normally wouldn't do. Uh, it's defined as a non-technical method of manipulating people into performing certain actions or revealing confidential information. Uh, such as passwords, personal information, or maybe credit card numbers. Uh, we know the types of fraud that social engineers perpetrate as scams or cons. Uh, a fraudster will pretend to be something they're not to get you to part with your money or private information or both. So we've broken it down into these three essential steps you can take, uh, which we'll explore during our time together. Uh, we'll discuss ways to help you identify and avoid potential scams. Uh, we'll talk about some of the common fraud schemes that are targeting consumers and some of the steps you can take to help prevent fraud before it strikes. So let's first take a look at some of the ways fraudsters will try to fool you. Phishing emails are fraudulent emails which try to fool you into revealing protected information. Uh, the same type of fraud can also come in the form of a text message. Uh, these messages may appear to be from a trusted source, uh, such as your financial institution or other familiar company or organization. Identity thieves can send out hundreds of these messages in the hope that someone's going to take the bait. Many people are now familiar with this type of scam, yet every day there are new victims who fall prey to this fraud. You know, these fake email messages uh, may ask you to verify your personal or financial information, or maybe even uh, a login ID and password. They may mention suspicious activity on your account or problems with your payment information. Often, cyber criminals will try to encourage you to open an, an attachment or click on a link in an email. And this can install malicious software or viruses onto your computer or take you to a malicious, malicious website. Phishing emails are sometimes not so easy to identify. So always check the email address from where the message originates. However, cyber criminals can also spoof or mimic the address to make it appear that it's coming from a legitimate source. So phishing emails are normally sent in large batches to many people. So be cautious of generic greetings in an email. If you don't see your name, be suspicious. Also, phishing emails will often be written using poor grammar and with multiple misspellings. Legitimate emails would never ask you to provide or verify personal information. And be extremely cautious of clicking on any links or attachments in a suspicious email. Even if a link shows a specific web address, it could be forged. Now, many times phishing emails will try to instill a sense of urgency. 
They want you to believe you must act fast. So don't fall prey to these schemes. Take your time and scrutinize all emails and text messages you receive before taking any action. And finally, a phishing email could be coming from a friend, family member, or other acquaintance. This usually happens when the other person's email account has been hacked. Now, never click on any links or open attachments in a suspicious email. If you receive an email from someone you know that seems unusual or is something maybe you weren't expecting, be cautious and contact that person by phone to ensure that the message is legitimate. Now, the best thing to do with a suspicious email is just delete it. And if you receive the message to your work or agency email address, notify your technology team about that. So now we'll take a look at some of the other common scams that are out there today. Now, phone scams have really been on the rise during the pandemic. There are many different themes to these scams, but they all start with the intended victim receiving uh, an unsolicited phone call from someone claiming to be from maybe a well-known company, organization, or even a government agency. Uh, in the computer repair scam, uh, they may claim to be from Apple, Microsoft, or some other computer tech company. Uh, they'll say they're maybe identified a virus or some other issue with your computer, and will ask you to provide uh, them remote access to your computer. If they get remote access, they have the ability to steal any information from your computer, or maybe install malicious software. Uh, they may even ask for your credit card information to pay for the repair service. In the merchant refund scam, the, call will, the caller will say they're from Amazon, PayPal, or some other online company. They'll claim you are owed a refund and will ask for your account information to process the payment. They likely will ask for remote access to your computer, and then they may even ask you to log into your digital banking account to process the payment directly to your account. Don't fall for this, all right? If they get access to your online account, you know, they can create a wire transfer or some other type of payment. And remember that merchants don't need to call you to process a correction or refund on an established account you have with them. In the government agency scam, uh, they may claim they're the police or some other law enforcement agency, maybe a tax revenue agency, or even a country's embassy or uh, consulate. They'll state that uh, you owe back taxes or your identification is being used in a money laundering scheme, or maybe your passport has been blocked for fraud. Many times these callers will become abusive or make threats of arrest. They may ask for the payment of the taxes or fees in the form of prepaid gift cards. Remember, a government agency will never make initial contact by phone or email and will never make threats of arrest to obtain payment of taxes or fees. Now, online friendship scams uh, begin with criminals using legitimate social media platforms or even dating websites looking for their targets. They will create fictitious profiles of someone looking for a relationship and may snare their victims by using the person's own profile to make it appear that they are the perfect match. They will carry on conversations with their victim through text, email, and sometimes phone calls, uh, but they will never meet them in person, right? This can sometimes go on for months, making the victim feel that they sincerely know this other person and are in a genuine relationship. Uh, then the scammer will report some type of crisis in their life. Um, in which they need immediate money. They will ask their victims to loan them funds and to send the money through wire transfers or maybe even go purchase prepaid gift cards. After getting as much money as possible from their victim, they then disappear, all right? And this could leave the victim, you know, with both financial and sometimes even psychological damages. You know, they say you should avoid lending money to family or friends, but you definitely should never lend money to someone you have never met in person and who you only know through their online profile. Uh, 
Now, with so many people out of work during the pandemic, the use of online job searches has really increased. Uh, unfortunately, phony employment listings can be posted on legitimate websites, or they can be offered through direct mail sent to your inbox. The job just seems to be the perfect match, and the salary is extremely favorable. Uh, the scammers may, may ask you to complete an extensive uh, employment application, um, which includes providing many personal details and may even ask for a copy of identification, such as your driver's license or passport. Uh, then when an offer of employment is made, they will say that there, is, there are processing, training, or maybe housing fees that must be paid up front and are, sent, are to be sent through wire transfer. Uh, they indicate that these fees will be reimbursed, you know, in the first payroll. Unfortunately, once the funds are sent, the money and the job are both gone. And since so much of personal information was disclosed, there will likely be additional fears in regards to identity theft. Now, the internet has also made it so easy to browse listings for apartment, housing, or even vacation home rentals. Um, and it has made it even easier for scammers to find their victims. Uh, these scammers will post a phony listing on a legitimate rental website, or they can even create a fictitious website um, displaying photos, descriptions, pricing, and they even post fake reviews. They may advertise excessive amenities for very low rental rates, and everything just seems perfect, uh, but maybe just a little too perfect. They will ask for an uh, advance payment of the rental and security fees through wire transfers. And once these funds are sent, the scammers will disappear with the money. To avoid these types of fraud, be cautious of rentals that are below the market rate or someone insisting you send money for a, you know, a site unseen property. You should always do extensive research to ensure the legitimacy of the property and the person with whom you are dealing. You know, fake check scams have been around for a very long time, um, but are still one of the more common fraud schemes we see today. Uh, and many people continue to be taken in by these thieves. You know, maybe you've posted an online advertisement of an item for sale or responded to an offer of employment as a payment processor, or have even been contacted that you are the winner of a lottery or the recipient of an inheritance from a long lost relative. In each of these scams, the criminal will send you what appears to be a very legitimate looking check, maybe as payment for the sale item, or as part of your duties as a payment processor, or maybe as the proceeds of the lottery winnings or the inheritance. The check will usually be in a larger amount than it was supposed to be sent. Uh, and they'll ask you to deposit the check and return the excess funds to them by money transfer. However, the check is actually counterfeit and if you deposit it into your account and send the money, you know, it may take several days before the check is returned unpaid and all the funds are removed from your account, leaving you with a loss. Now, since the checks are fake, there's no way to recover any money you may have removed from your account. So it's very important to stay vigilant so that you can stay one step ahead of the fraudsters. And being aware of these common types of fraud will help you do that. Remember that scams can target people of all ages and backgrounds. Everyone may be vulnerable to a scam. Scams may appear to be a genuine offer or bargain and are designed to trick you when you least expect it. Excuse me. Be cautious when dealing with people or businesses exclusively online, or if you receive an unexpected phone call from someone claiming to be from a known company or organization. Conduct extensive, independent research of the person or company before engaging in any type of monetary transaction. Always use extreme caution when sending money to someone you have never personally met. Should you initiate the transaction, the money is most likely unrecoverable. 
Be cautious of suspicious emails. You know, remember that even a friend or family member's email account could be hacked and used to send a fraudulent message to you. And remember that gift cards are never an authorized type of payment, you know, unless of course you're going shopping. Uh, if someone initiates contact with you and requests payment in the form of prepaid gift cards, it is most definitely fraud. And if the offer is too good to be true, it probably is. Like I mentioned before, never provide remote access to your computer and never give anyone your online banking credentials for any reason. This is a very, very important thing to remember. You know, and be especially cautious if you have a feeling that something seems unusual or suspicious. So often, members who have become victims of fraud report that they felt uneasy about the situation uh, that they were presented, but they proceeded to take action anyway. Always listen to your instincts and don't be pressured to act fast. Now, I keep speaking of phishing emails, but fake emails are the number one way that people's identities are stolen or how their computers uh, or even entire networks become infected by mal uh, malware and viruses. It is extremely common problem in the workplace. So be cautious of any suspicious emails you receive, especially if they ask you for sensitive information or for you to click on a link or open an attachment. Now, as an added privacy precaution, it can be a good idea to cover your computer's webcam when not in use. You know, it's a very rare occurrence, but if your computer is hacked, your camera could be turned on without you even knowing. So just placing a piece of solid tape over the lens when it's not in use can prevent any of these mishaps. You know, thieves can compromise an ATM's card reader uh, through what is known as a skimming device. They can also install a small camera to steal your personal identification number. Um, whenever using an ATM, always protect your pin by covering the keypad with your free hand. And always review, review your account activity, either through digital banking or your account statement. This includes your credit card account and immediately report any discrepancies or suspicious activity to UNFCU or your other financial institution. And be cautious of the information that's available about you online. You know, social media sites can be an identity thief's best resource for locating information about their victims. You know, online profiles, job resumes, and personal pages must have adequate privacy and security settings to ensure you stay safe. You know, try to minimize the amount of personal information you post online and always be careful with whom you connect on any social networking site. Install antivirus software and be sure your computer's operating system and web browsers are updated. You know, you should set your computer to update automatically as the new updates become available. In many cases, these updates include the latest security software to protect you from cyber criminals. You know, passwords are an important part in security. So choose strong passwords for any sensitive websites. You know, to, today many websites and computer applications require complex passwords. You know, these can include upper, lowercase letters, numbers, and special characters. And don't use the same password for different websites. You know, some other things that you can do to help prevent identity theft and fraud, use multi-factor authentication when it, whenever it's offered on a website. You know, at UNFCU, we also provide uh, the use of Google Authenticator, as Valentina had mentioned earlier, uh, so that you can use multi-factor authentication without even having to receive a text message or an email. You know, you could set up account alerts in your UNFCU digital banking account. Uh, with these alerts, you can receive email notifications of your account balances or for any transaction that meets the alert parameters that you created. Uh, we have also recently activated member alerts for our credit and debit cards. All right. Uh, just log into digital banking, go to account services and then alerts. And you can see all of these and how to set them up. And visit UNFCU's website to see the latest fraud schemes and see our frequently asked questions related to security. 
And if you believe your login information may be compromised for a website or email account, change your password right away. And if you think your UNFCU account or personal information may be compromised in any manner, contact us immediately, all right? Uh, people who may be victims of identity theft and who have a US social security number can place a freeze on their credit reports to prevent US-based credit and loan accounts from being fraudulently opened in their names. So thank you all very much for joining me today. Remember that UNFCU is always here to assist you in all your financial needs and for providing peace of mind. And remember that you are the best and sometimes only defense from becoming a victim of identity theft, scams, or online fraud. Thank you.